When I saw these five minute craft food hack videos, I immediately questioned all of them. But for some reason, they are oddly satisfying. But do they actually work is gonna be the question. All right, so this first one uses an avocado and I love avocados, so I hope this one works. All right, so it looks like they have this like ripe, mushy avocado. Take the little top off of the avocado and literally squeeze the avocado onto a piece of bread. All right. The first thing I noticed when I started watching this video, when they took the little tip off and they started to squeeze out the avocado, it looked like it started to come out of the side and they immediately jumped to a different angle and a different clip. Also, I thought it was funny that it already looked like it was guacamole shooting out of the avocado, which doesn't seem realistic to me. All right, so theirs was super ripe and mushy. So we're gonna mush this thing up as much as we can. Let's get the top, maybe that'll help. Oh, I already squeezed the top off. Well, let me just take the top off now. All right, I'm gonna keep squishing it, but it's already starting to rip at the top of the avocado. So I'm scared to squish it more. I think it's good enough to try and squeeze out, even though the top is like already breaking. Whoa, wait, this is working better than I thought. Okay, but also, no, that's, that's not what the video looked like at all. Not even a little bit. And it's just completely, okay. And it's a big, like chunk of it. I wonder if I can like squeezing the rest out. Oh, there comes the pit. I didn't even think about the pit being in there. Like how are you gonna squeeze it out with the pit still in there? Also, I feel like this wastes a lot of avocado because there's still a bunch in here unless you just squeeze it all out. It's just coming out on the sides. It does not in fact look like guacamole though. I think we should take a bite. I mean, I love bread and I love avocados, so like not horrible. I'm trying to figure out why you would need to use this hack ever. And the only one I came up with is if you don't have any utensils at all. I guess maybe if you're stranded in a jungle and they only have avocados, you could eat it. I mean, if you really wanna up your avocado game, you need to get yourselves one of these bad boys. This side cuts it, this side like will wedge it, and then you can get the pit out and then you can mash it with this part. So you don't need to get your hands messy at all. So this hack was clearly a fail. Am I surprised? Not at all. I'm super interested in this next hack because it's actually quite ridiculous. All right, so they take the balloon, blow it up, and then place it on top of the jar and then let some of the air out of the other end of the balloon. And then it's going to like close and entrap a lid on top of your jar. Like, why would you need to do that? Like, even if you lost the lid on a jar, you could use plastic wrap or aluminum foil or a Ziploc bag. Like you just have a balloon on hand. Like I have to go buy balloons for this. Okay, I have my jar with a lid, but I'm going to remove the lid. I think that's good enough. Okay, so you put the blown up balloon on top, but you let out some air like slowly. Okay, so that like kind of worked, but not really, because if I were to flip this over, it looks like it would seep out of that side. Maybe if I like just pull it down. There we go. But it, <laughs> it just looks kind of funny. Why would you need to ever do this? If you have a balloon and you have a jar without a lid, problem solved. See, now I guess that's how you get it off. Oh. <laughs> Every time you would need to put the lid back on the jar, you'd have to blow up either the same balloon or get a new balloon to put back on. I guess technically this wasn't a fail, but it's, it's just kind of ridiculous in my book. So for this next hack, we're gonna be burning cookies, which makes me really sad because I love cookies and I would never purposefully burn cookies. So if you do ever find yourself in a situation where you accidentally burn your cookies, all they do is just take the burnt cookie and then grate the burnt part off on a grater. And then it comes out perfectly clean and crisp on the bottom. All right, let's burn some cookies. All right, so in the video, they used parchment paper. So I'm doing it exactly like them. All right, we've got some cookies. I'm just gonna bake two of them because I don't wanna waste all my cookies because I love cookies. Into the oven they go to their death. All right, here come our burnt cookies. They are nice and crisp, but now I've got to let them cool so that we can actually try the hack. They have the burnt smell, which means the whole cookie will be infested with burn. So our burnt cookies have finally cooled and this cookie is definitely burnt and charred on the bottom. It's like a hockey puck. I think it's starting to work. I don't know how much longer I'll have to go though. 
It's, it's starting to come off. I feel like by the end of this, like I'm not gonna have any cookie left though. It's definitely a little bit lighter on the bottom, but now half my cookie is gone. So here's what it looks like before, and here's what it looks like after. Let's uh, give this burnt cookie a try. I mean, it mostly still has that burnt taste. I mean, maybe if you burn your cookie perfectly on the bottom like they did in the video, it would work. I have a fun hack that's similar to this that actually works on burnt toast. So you just take your burnt piece of toast and you use a knife and scrape off the burnt parts. My dad used to do this for us all the time when we were kids because he didn't want us to waste the bread. That one works like a charm. I do it all the time. This next hack uses my all-time favorite fruit, bananas. They're so cute, they remind me of a smile and they're just bright and yellow. All right, so you make banana waffles out of just bananas. You wanna add oats? Nope, apparently you don't have to do that. You wanna add flour? Nope, apparently you don't have to do that either. But what you do is you slice into the banana, take the peel off, and then boil the bananas. Then you put them in your waffle maker and they come out perfectly clean and looks just like a waffle. This one I'm like super skeptical of. So I'm wondering if the way that they sliced into the banana and took the peel off has anything to do with this, but we're gonna do it exactly like they did it. So while the water's boiling, I'm going to slice into these and peel them up. When I was little, I used to take bananas and like pretend like I was on the telephone. I was like, hello, how are you girl? Like that's what I did when I was like five years old. Do I know how long to boil them? No idea. But it looks like in the video, they boil them until they start to turn more yellow. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. All right, these look nice and yellow and they kind of exploded a little bit. Well, I guess all that's left to do is put it in the waffle maker and see if it works. Here we go. All the banana juice is falling out. I'm gonna have a big mess to clean up. Mainly just banana juice, but you know, it's fine. I don't even know how long to leave it in here. Ah! Okay, I'm just gonna let it go a little bit longer and see what happens. Okay, let's try this again. No, it just is kind of burnt. Surprisingly, it like stayed in one piece. This looks nothing like they showed in the video, but I'm interested to try it. Like, does it just taste like burnt and crispy bananas? It's not horrible, but like, if I want bananas, like, I'm just gonna eat a banana, and I'm sad because I just wasted three bananas on this. This one is a major fail. For our next hack, we're making potato chips in the microwave. All you do is take a potato, get some kind of mandolin slicer or thinly slice your potatoes, put them on a microwavable plate, and then put them in the microwave. How long do we do this? 10 minutes, it doesn't even tell you. In the video, they actually show the potatoes crisping up in the microwave. Now, I do think this would really work in the air fryer, like no doubt about that. But the microwave, I'm a little skeptical. All right, so I got my mandolin slicer that makes it super duper thin. Slice it up. Oh, these are so thin. If it's this thin, it really might work. Okay, so I'm also gonna test it out by using my knife and trying to get the slices thin as well, but they probably won't be that thin. Also in the video, I saw them use a hack where they put like a cup or a bowl on top of one plate and then put the other plate on top so you can, I guess, cook more in the microwave. So we're gonna try that out too. Maybe let's start with five minutes. Ow, ow, ow. If you try this, wear oven mitts. These are the ones that I cut with a knife. I let them go for five and a half minutes. I'm kind of surprised. Like these feel kind of crispy and they look golden brown. And these are the ones that I used the little like mandolin slicer. And these are very stuck to the plate. So I don't even know if I can, uh, I mean, they're literally stuck. Like I cannot even, I might've just ruined my plate. Maybe I should have sprayed the plate, but like they didn't do that in the video. All right, well, they did get way more crispy than I expected. You hear that crunch? This like actually kind of worked. If you're gonna do this, I would probably season them. But like, I truly cannot believe my eyes or my mouth. Now this one, like if you get them too thin, they will probably stick. Like I got this little tiny piece. So we're just gonna try this. 
If these weren't stuck to the plate, that actually worked too. So my recommendation would be to just chop your potatoes with a knife or use a mandolin slicer that does not slice them this thin. If you thought these food hacks were weird, wait till you check out these kitchen gadgets. Some of them work, but some of them not so much. Give that a click and I'll see you in the next video.